Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us on KXAN Live. I'm Will Dupree coming to you from the KXAN Live studio, and we're looking live outside right now. A gorgeous day. This is the weather that we hope we have on Monday next week. And why is that? That is because that is the day of the total solar eclipse. We want to be able to see it in full here in Austin and throughout Central Texas. And we're working on those details about the forecast, but we're not going to talk about that today. Again, we are six days from the eclipse, so we are bringing into our conversation Eric Henriksen. He's our senior science reporter here at uh, KXAN. And Eric, you are also focusing so much of your reporting on the eclipse, preparing for months ahead of this. And we are less than a week away now. How do you feel? Exhausted. <laughs> excited. I'm in a weird place. Like, I'll be honest, I've been doing stories for about a year now yeah and on tuesday i still have a job but i don't have a job like i don't, I don't know what my direction is i'll figure that out come i know tuesday we morning. build up so much to this moment yeah. it happens and then it's like where do you go from there and if it's cloudy that means my life has all been leading to that <laughs> so i'm sure there's a metaphor in there somewhere i will say our weather team here at kxan is focused um laser focused on that forecast to be able to share it with anybody out there about what to expect on Monday. So please tune in to that for them. Uh, but Eric, I wanted to talk to you about a story that you have up on our website right now. And this right. is a part of the uh, eclipse that I didn't really think would be an effect of it. And I want to show people the headline really quickly. Right here, eclipse offers views of every planet and solar system if the weather cooperates. So this is pretty amazing that we'll be able to see even more than just that total eclipse. Right. So apparently every planet, this is crazy to me. I didn't realize this until two weeks ago. Every planet in our solar system, I'm not sure about Pluto. I'm not sure we count that one all the time, <laughs> but in this case we can't. Let's say every visible planet that we're for sure as a planet will be in our visible space during the eclipse. What's cool is when the eclipse happens, it blocks out all light from the sun, as you can see in this animation I made to make things look snazzy. Uh, so all the planets will be there right, right along the eclipse path, pretty much. You can kind of draw a line right across. Venus will be the easiest to spot. It's going to be super, super bright. Jupiter will be the next easiest. There's actually a comet moving through our solar system right now, right next to Jupiter. And, and I was told if it gets angry and pops off a little bit, we should be able to see it with our naked eye. Uranus, Neptune, Saturn, and Mars, all visible. But we'll need binoculars or a telescope to look at those. And you need to be careful when you look at those because you can look at them during the totality of the eclipse. That's when the moon is perfectly over the sun, completely blocking out its light. But in the moments leading up to and the moments immediately after, you don't want to be looking at with binoculars up in the sky. You don't want to accidentally catch the sun right in your eyeball. Huh, that is amazing. And you talked to an expert about this at UT. And let's listen to her and then we'll continue our conversation on the other side. While they're setting up their equipment, they'll put an eye patch on their main observing eye, let it go ahead and dark adapt so that when they get everything set up, they're ready to go and they have an eye that is, you know, ready to go for, for eyepiece observing. As Laura Aikens of the University of Texas' Department of Astronomy, she's, that's a big piece of ice she has. If you are going to look at the eclipse, maybe put an eye patch on. Just lean up to it. Think like a pirate does. Pirates yeah. actually used to do this when they were uh, observing at sea. They put an eye patch on. It wasn't always because they were missing an eye. It's because you could take it off or remove it, and this eye is ready for the nighttime or under the deck uh, of the boat. But the same rule applies here. You have an eye patch on. Astronomers will do this. They'll remove the eye patch. They can look up. Your eyes already are ready to look up into the night sky. It's already adjusted for darkness, and you can see these bright spots, these stars, these plants even easier wow. without having to take the added time to adjust, which is important because in Austin, when we have a minute 30 of totality out near Fredericksburg, we have about four minutes, four and a half minutes. That's where I'm going to be. Uh, if, if Hopefully things look, work out really well. Four and yeah. a half minutes out there is pretty great. But there you might be able to adjust in Austin, unlikely. So if you're in Austin, maybe we should see a lot of pirates walking around come <laughs> Monday morning. You never know. Prepping. Maybe this live stream will get shared with a bunch of people and they'll have the eye patch on along with those solar eclipse glasses. I wouldn't be surprised if there's an eye patch trend with eclipses on them. And so mm. you have the glasses with the patch and then you can't see a thing. <laughs> right. I mean, it might be that way if we uh, have cloud cover here in our yeah. area too. So again, fingers crossed that it won't be that way and next Monday. Even if, And you covered this yesterday. We'll yeah. have a story yesterday. It's on our website, kxcene.com right now. I'm going to give him some promotion today <laughs> uh, that covers this, where if we do have cloud cover, we actually will 
will experience something. So if you're worried about that, it's not completely negative. We are still going to experience this once in a lifetime event. It's just slightly different than we would have experienced if there was no clouds. Yeah. So look at the positivity of that. Uh, as meteorologist Kristen Curry told me for that story, you know, the sky will still darken. Uh, it will look like almost that we're at nighttime here. The street lights will come on. You'll maybe hear some of the bugs like crickets start chirping, maybe mosquitoes even coming out, which is not so great. Uh, but yeah, th those effects will be seen even if it is cloudy throughout our area and here in Austin on Monday. Right. Animals are still going to react to the eclipse. So that's going to be really cool to observe. The bats down the uh, Lady Bird Lake under the bridges, that's one spot I would check out if I were you, if it's going to be super cloudy, because you know they're going to kind of flutter out and maybe look around. I've heard mixed things on that, by the way. I've spoken to experts. Some have told me they're probably just going to look out, see that it's dark, and be curious. Then by the time the eclipse is over, go back to bed. Mm -hmm. Others have told me because the insects will all rile up, they might go out hunting. So we're hmm. going to find out for ourselves. There's actually not a ton of uh, animal and eclipse research that's been done over the years because they're so rare. Yeah, so that'll we'll, be fascinating. Some of the first things we can look for. Absolutely. And we have such a big bat population here in downtown Austin, so maybe that will be an effect from it. Right. And there's other cool things like giraffes run around. Uh, they get really anxious. Some hmm. animals will try to go to bed. This is a story I'm hearing Friday, by the way. Here's a preview. <laughs> uh, animals get kind of anxious. They'll try to go to bed. Gorillas, for instance, will climb down. Uh, there's a sp species of monkey that howls. It's a howler monkey. And it has a very distinct howl during an eclipse that they've never heard before. And they're not sure what, what it is or, or why they're howling that way. It wasn't until the 2017 eclipse that people really started looking at animals and kind of collecting vast amounts of data on it, but there's still not a ton of data out there on animals with eclipse. So there's a project this year, the Eclipse Safari, again, this is a preview, I haven't written this down yet. <laughs> I think it's called the Eclipse Safari Project. Hmm. And the whole point of that is to track animal behavior during the eclipse, not just in the eclipse path, but also outside the eclipse. So if you're not in the eclipse path and, and it's occurring, they want you to actually record what your dog and cat are doing during the eclipse. Wow. And don't worry, they don't look up. Animals don't look up at the sun. That's a human thing. We're the weirdos, not... <laughs> Not, not animals. That's not us. That's an us problem. That is so fascinating. And when is that story airing? That's an air Friday okay. morning is my plan. In, if, as things go to, to plan, as yeah. they always do, right? <laughs> right. You just never know what will pop up, but we'll look forward to that too. One other thing that's happening on Friday, and you're a big proponent of this, Eric. Uh, talk about the special that's going to be airing on Friday afternoon. Yeah, we're putting together a big Eclipse special airing 4.30 on KXAN on Friday afternoon. There's our cool graphic. Uh, it's hosted by me and the First Morning Weather Team. Will will join us a little bit. Matt Grant, our investigator. Eric Cabrinas, our traffic reporter. Doing a whole group project here to kind of showcase all the amazing things about the eclipse, what you need to know to be best prepared for the eclipse, some fun science things, some fun impact things. Like you don't think about how much money is spent during eclipse, the millions and millions of dollars. It was 200 plus million dollars in the 2017 eclipse spent in South Carolina alone. Hmm. Texas is obviously a lot bigger. The eclipse path is a lot bigger. So they're expecting even more money to be raised during this eclipse. That's one of my favorite stories we got in there. Uh, but there's a lot of cool stuff. We'll, we'll follow the path. We'll tell you where to look, where, where it's going, all the great things you need to know about the eclipse. Get you prepared for the event on the day, the day before. And then we'll air it again uh, Monday morning at 8.30 on the CW. So if you missed that, you can catch it again on the CW. But please watch 4.30 KXAN this Friday. You know, we always call ourselves the local election headquarters. I would say that we should revise that to say the local eclipse headquarters because we got you covered pretty much on every single base. We have it across the board. <laughs> and then Tuesday morning, it's a skill set none of us are going to need right. ever again in our lives, <laughs> most likely. Yeah, we might have to cover long lines at the airport or something. That, that might be the kind that's, of residual that's effect probably from all gonna that. Be, there, uh, I expect that to be a case. I expect traffic patterns to be slow throughout the day. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked the governor's office a few weeks ago what sort of economic impact they anticipated. And they're going to have numbers after the eclipse. So we're going to see that number pop up. I wonder about the hotel occupancy uh, in Austin alone as we have the yeah. hotel occupancy tax. How much money are we going to generate through that and how will that be used? There's a lot of cool stuff going to be after effects. But the fun sciencey stuff that I'm usually involved in, not so much. So I'll have to pivot to, I don't know, water maybe. <laughs> we, we have water. I've been doing water you know, for a there's while. There's plenty of things to yeah. cover, as you have proven time and time again. Well, so thank you. Uh, I will let us wrap everything up there and uh, just let everybody know that on our website, kxan.com, we have an entire section devoted just to the eclipse, including a countdown that's right available on our homepage. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are six days away from this eclipse. So uh, we are getting prepared. We hope you are. And if you are still just kind of getting your bearings about the eclipse, we have a lot of information for you. And Eric, again, that's on our website. KXN.com slash weather slash eclipse. And it's also on the homepage. You just click on it. It's all, all over right. the place. We're good. We, we make you, it easy We got you covered. You. The eclipse headquarters that we are. So... <laughs>
<laughs> well, Eric, uh, thank you again for our conversation. And I guess this will be our last one until uh, Tuesday when, or on Monday, excuse me, when you will be in Fredericksburg. Right. I'm going to be in Marble Falls that day. So we're going to be in prime position to see everything. We're going to be in pretty good spots. Yeah. I think we're both very lucky to have good spots to check out the eclipse. Absolutely. My, my parents are coming in this weekend and they're going to stay at our house. And so they'll, they'll get a minute. And I'm going to get that four and a half sweet minutes. Well, it's a year's <laughs> worth of buildup for four and a half minutes. So Amazing. We're going to enjoy it while we can. I found out today uh, my fiance's coworker uh, let me know that she has a friend from California who's actually coming to Lampasas to get married during the eclipse. So oh. there are so many stories like this that we're going to be following. We're still piecing them all together. But you all can tune in and uh, hopefully find out a little bit more about that wedding that will happen on Monday during the total the path of totality uh, in Lampasas. Pretty amazing. Really cool. Really cool. Yeah. All right, everybody. That is Eric Henriksen. I'm Will Dupree. We will see you back here at another time and uh, again on Monday when the eclipse happens. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.